All right, in this video, we're going to analyze the graph of a rational equation. And the first example, we are given the equation. So when you just have the equation, the first step is going to get a graph of it. So we're going to use uh, Desmos to put that equation in. sort of adjust the window until you feel like you have all the features of the graph in the window. It's going to take a sort of screenshot of that. All right, then you want to find any vertical asymptotes and holes in the graph. So the both of these occur when you have division by zero. So we want to see when the denominator is zero, and set it equal to zero and solve. That's a polynomial equation. In this case, it's a quadratic equation. If you're lucky, you can factor that. And this does factor, right? x minus 4, x plus 3. So uh, we see x equal to 4 and x equal to negative 3. And the x equal to 4, you can tell, is a vertical asymptote from the graph. Uh, the x equals negative 3 does not appear to be one. So you would lead you to think that that's a whole. You can tell from the equation if we have these numbers put in, if we get uh, 0 in the numerator, uh, then it's going to be a whole, because we have 0 divided by 0. And if we get a non-zero number in the numerator, then it will be a vertical asymptote. So we're going to take 4 and negative 3 and put it into the numerator. All right, so let's try 4 first. So we got 4 to the third is 64 minus 3 times 16, which is 48, minus 13 times 4, which is 52, plus 15. And uh, 64 minus 48 is 16, 15 minus 52 is 37, and that's not zero. We don't really care what that number is, that it's not zero. So, Four, when x equals 4, the denominator is 0, but the numerator is not, and so that is division by 0, and that's where we get that vertical asymptote. So. so the denominator is 0 when x equals 4 and x equals negative 3. The numerator is non-zero when x equals 4. Let's try putting in negative 3. So negative 3 raised to the third power is negative 27. Negative 3 squared is 9, times negative 3 is negative 27. Negative 13 times negative 3 is positive 39, and then 15 
27 and 27 is 54, and 39 and 15 is also 54. So negative 54 and positive 54 is 0. And you can see that when x is negative 3, we do get 0 in the numerator as well. So when you have 0 divided by 0, it's still undefined. That leads to a hole in the graph rather than a vertical asymptote. Uh, remember, you don't see that in a computer-generated graph. But uh, there is a value missing there at around x equals negative 3. All right, so the domain we can state now, it's all real numbers except where the equation is undefined, which is from division by 0, and so it's just going to exclude those values that we found in the second step. So all real numbers except when x is 4 or negative 3. In interval notation, we would start at negative infinity, go up to negative 3, skip negative 3, go to 4, skip 4, and then go to positive infinity. The next step is to find any horizontal or slant asymptotes. And you can see from the graph that there is a slant asymptote. To get the equation that we need to use polynomial long division, we would take the numerator and divide by the denominator. So you can get the details of that from the methodology. We'd set it up like this, where the numerator is inside the long division symbol and the denominator is outside, and then comparing the leading coefficients, x cubed divided by x squared is x, and then multiply x with x squared and get x cubed, x and negative x is positive x squared, sorry, negative x squared, and then x and negative 12 is negative 12x, but we're subtracting, so you would switch the signs on all these. And you subtract, and you repeat using the new leading coefficient down here. At the end of the day, what's above the long division sign is the quotient, and that's going to be the equation of your horizontal slant asymptote, at least when you set it equal to y. So we'd say it's x minus 2. It sort of goes along with the picture. You see uh, be a line with slope 1 going right through y equals negative 2 would in fact be a good slant asymptote for this graph. So there's the equation right there. All right, next we're going to find the intercepts. You can do this from the equation or the graph. Remember that a y-intercept is where the graph crosses the vertical axis, and that's where x is 0. So using the equation, you can just replace x with 0. And that makes it pretty simple. It's all these terms are just 0, except for that 15 and that negative 12. And so you end up getting 15 over negative 12. Which reduces to 
5 over 4. Negative 5 over 4, that's your y-intercept. You can see that from the graph right there. Negative 1 and a quarter. The x-intercepts are going to be found by replacing y with 0 and solving. This leads to a rational equation, and we've seen the methodology for solving those already. So replacing y with 0, you get this equation. Remember, the first step is to find the LCD and then multiply by it. And there's only one fraction, so you know the LCD is this denominator. And multiplying by it, well, it's 0 on the other side, so that's just going to be 0. And then multiplying it on the right is just going to get rid of that fraction. So you really just have to set the numerator equal to 0. The other way to think about that is the only way this fraction is going to be 0 is if the numerator is 0. So we can simplify this dramatically by just setting the numerator equal to 0. And going through and solving this, you can show that we can, in fact, factor it. In fact, we know where it's 0 from earlier. We found out the numerator is 0 when x is negative 3. So you know one of the factors is x plus 3. Now you can factor that off or use long division to show that the other two factors are five and one. Yeah, five and one. So you get your values for when the numerator is zero to be when x equals negative 3, when x equals 1, or when x equals 5. Now, if any of these values make the denominator 0, they won't actually be x-intercepts. So that would be 0 over 0, and that's where there's a hole. And we know that's going to be the case with x equals negative 3. We've already found and established that that's a hole, so we can get rid of that. Um, you can check the others by putting x equal to 1 and 5 into the denominator, but remember, we already know where the denominator is 0. It's 0 at negative 3 and 4. So we know that these other two are, in fact, the x-intercepts. The last step is you can take all that information and actually arrive at an equation for it, but we, of course, know the equation in this example. One other example will show us how we can start with the graph and actually work to that equation in step 7. So here we don't have an equation, we're just given the graph. It'll make some of these other parts easier, but that last part will be a challenge. And you can tell from the graph that there are vertical intercepts at x equals negative 1 and at x equals 2. We can't tell if there's any holes in the graph because this is a computer drawn graph. So there could be holes that we don't know about. We'll just have to assume there are none. But we do know the location of those vertical asymptotes. Um, the domain is then going to be all real numbers except for these values. And an interval notation. Let's go ahead and take the one we had before. We would go from negative infinity to negative 1. We would skip negative 1 and go from negative 1 to 2. We would skip 2 and go from 2 to infinity. 
Looking at the graph, you can see there is a horizontal asymptote right at the horizontal axis, where y is 0. Notice the graph can cross that horizontal asymptote, um, but follows along it for the end behavior. So there's the equation for the horizontal asymptote. The y-intercept, you can find that from looking at the graph. The y-intercept is at 0, negative 2. And x-intercepts, are also determined from the graph. You can see there's one at negative 2, 0, and there's one at 3, 0. Now, let's determine the equation from all this information. We know what the general look of these things is because we can just start with that equation from the first example. And then we just need to work backwards through all the information. So the first piece of information is that we have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 1 and 2. That means that the denominator should be 0 when x is negative 1 or when x is 2. So just put in x plus 1 and x minus 2 in the denominator. Now when x is negative 1, the x plus 1 part will be 0. When x is 2, the x minus 2 part will be 0. So we now have an equation that has vertical asymptotes at negative 1 and 2. Right. The next thing we need is the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are where the numerator is 0. And we have those at x equals negative 2 and x equals 3. So let's make the numerator 0 there by putting in x plus 2 and x minus 3. Now when x is equal to negative 2, the x plus 2 factor is 0. And when x is equal to 3, the x minus 3 factor is 0. All right, so, so this equation now has vertical, inter vertical asymptotes at negative 1 and 2 and x-intercepts at negative 2 and 3. But it has a horizontal asymptote at 1 because these degrees are the same and when you divide those, you're just going to get 1. So how do we make it have a horizontal asymptote at 0? We need to make the degree of the bottom bigger than the degree of the top. If you look at the graph, you can see the behavior at these two asymptotes is different. At negative 1, you see one side going up and one side going down. That's typical of that factor appearing once or an odd number of times in the denominator. Whereas if you look at this other asymptote, they're both going down. That's more reminiscent or indicative of it being a even multiplicity. So we might expect that at x minus 2, factor in the denominator is actually an x minus 2 squared. And just go back and look at the graph of 1 over x squared, for instance. So we can actually fix both of those issues by making this x minus 2 have a multiplicity of 2. Alright, now we've got an equation that has vertical asymptotes at negative 1 and 2. It's got x-intercepts at negative 2 and 3, and it's got a horizontal asymptote at 0. The only thing we haven't addressed is the y-intercept. So what happens if we put in 0 for x? Because that's where the y-intercept is, right? If you put in 0 for x, then you get... Let's 
see, a 2 times negative 3 over 1 times negative 2 squared, which is 4. So this is going to be negative 3 halves. Now, is that the y-intercept that we want? No, it is not. We want the y-intercept to be negative 2. So how can we make it so that we put in 0 for x that this ends up being negative 2? Well, we just multiply this negative 3 halves by, uh, say, 4 thirds. Watch what happens then. If we put a 4 and a 3, then you have a 4 here and a 3 here. And you can see then that those 4s cancel and those 3s cancel, and you're left with just what you wanted, a negative 2. All right, so we now have found a good candidate for this equation. It just puts a 4 and a 3 there. And you can graph to validate that.